Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Today I have a mega video for you all where I am sharing my favorite thrift flips that I've done here on my channel. I have got 25 ideas for you. Now let's get crafting. This DIY is going to be using this really colorful box. Now, my daughter thought this was the cutest thing ever, but that's not really the colors that I do here in my home. So I wanted to give it a farmhouse makeover. Now you can see that somebody was struggling with getting that sticker off and using a heat gun. It just removes it so easily. I'm gonna go ahead and sand it all down and then I took it outside to spray paint it a taupey gray color. And now I'm gonna come back in with some neutral browns, white, gray, and I'm going to give it a wood look by just dry brushing on different colors of brown and gray. I just keep playing with it until I get it to the look that I like, and I'm just heat drying as I go so that it's not too clumpy. And again, we're just dry brushing it on, so that means not putting a lot of paint on your brush and then just coming back in with different layers. Now I've pre-marked some holes and I thought it would be really cute to add a little handle to the top of this. And I'm planning on using this to store remote controls in my front room. I love concealing remote controls. I don't like to see them sitting out all over the house. And so I love little containers like this and it's really long so it'll actually fit all of our controllers in it. Once I had my holes all drilled, I went ahead and added in the screws made sure they were on there nice and tight. And I will link any of the hardware that you see me using here down below in my description box so you can check that out. It just came from Amazon. And then once it's all done, you're ready to use it to organize things in your home. For this DIY, I'm going to be using this outdated container that I found at my local thrift store. And then I'm also going to be using this printable that I designed and it's free for all of you today. The link is down below in my description box. Once I had my containers painted the color that I wanted, which was this really pretty green color, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my tags and I lightly sprayed them with some hairspray to lock in that ink from the ink printer. Now I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and I'm going to make some vertical lines going all the way around both of the lids and then I'm going to come back in with my ruler and make a horizontal line on the smaller one and on the bigger one I'm going to do two. So that way they both have the same consistency square size on both of the lids even though one has a row of three of the check boxes and the other one only has two. Then I'm going to come in with my black paint and my paintbrush and I'm just going to go around the edges and paint in all of those squares creating that checkered pattern. And once everything was really dried, I came back in with my sanding block from the Dollar Tree and I just roughed it up in the spots that I wanted it because I wanted it to have that farmhouse vintagey look. And then now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm just going to go all over the whole bucket and then I'm going to seal on those tags as well. Now I'm going to go into my collection of my brads that I have. I love brads. I'm a paper crafter too so I have these all organized the way I like them and I'm just going to punch out some holes so that I can add some to this container. I loved the raised metal look on these. I thought it added a really cute detail and it made it look kind of like there's screws or bolts or grommets that you would see on some farmhouse furniture. Now I'm just going to come in after I've created my holes and I'm going to use these pull out drawer handles for the lids and I thought all together looks so cute. I opened the back side and sealed them all down with glue. For this DIY, I'm going to be using this metal decor for candles. Now, I see these all the time at thrift stores, and I thought it would be so cool to give it a farmhouse makeover. First, I'm going to start by taking some painter's tape. I cut it down to a smaller strip versus it being a thicker one that I had on hand, and I'm going to be taping off some of the glass because I want some of it to be painted, and then I want the other part to be glass to show something that I'm gonna be doing towards the end of this DIY. Once I had the parts all taped, I took it outside and spray painted the glass white, and then I painted the metal 
decor wall piece a really pretty tan taupey color. Then once I took off the painter's tape I could see that there was a little bit of bleedage coming through so I just took my sander and I just sanded off those pieces. It comes off nicely and then I roughed up some of the paint on the metal decor. Now I'm taking a small piece of foam and I'm going to put that right down inside of these glass pieces. It's going to conceal the foam so you can't see it anymore and it's going to look so cool because we are going to put some greenery in this and take it from looking too modern to more farmhouse. Now I'm going to use this long garland that I pick up from Hobby Lobby. I always just pick off what I need and I'm going to be using these boxwood little sprigs and then I'm going to just poke some holes inside of my foam that I put inside and I glued in place earlier. And then simply just put them all down in place and once I've got all of my little cups filled up I'm going to go back in with some of this moss and this is the part where the glass is so that you can see the moss in there and it just looks so pretty with the texture and it looks so farmhouse. It's such a great transformation. I see these all the time at my thrift stores. Definitely pick one up and give it a try for sure. Then once you're all done, put them all back inside and finish all the other cups and it's ready to be hung up in your home. This is another item that I see at thrift stores all the time and everybody passes them up because they're outdated and honestly it's just an item that people don't really put in their home anymore. So I had decided I'm going to try to give this a little facelift. Now keep in mind I got all of my items half off so this was not $5.99 it was just $3. So I went ahead and spray painted it black, took a really pretty glass cloche jar that I got from Ikea scrolled up some papers with some twine and then added a wreath around it and this makes a beautiful table centerpiece or something to put on your shelf in your home. With a lot of hard work and effort, my husband and I have finally launched my website. It is a fun place where you can go and check out all of my newest projects, things that I'm working on around here in my home, health, all sorts of different topics. It is a great and easy way to be able to pin the projects that I'm doing here within these videos that I post over there on my website. I would love to hear your feedback. So when you go over there and visit, do leave a comment and let me know what you think of it if you find it easy to use because we are always looking to improve that website. I will link that website down below my description box, but it's really simple. It's just HeidiSamble.com. This DIY is super simple. I find baskets like this all the time at my thrift stores and they are honestly one of my favorite things to pick up. Now I always get things half off. I go on the days where there's half off sales. So I'm going to start by just removing these handles from my buckets and then I'm going to take them outside and I'm going to spray paint them this beautiful blue color. I thought this color was so pretty. I love how it looks against the white. So I'm now going back in with some white paint that's acrylic with my paintbrush and I'm just going around the rim and then I'm going to add in a little bit of distressing so that way it has a very summery feel to it. I just love how this looks with the distressing on it and you can see that I'm coming in with a grayish brown color and really distressing the areas where it would get a lot of wear and tear. And I think that this really adds so much personality to the bucket when you do this. Now I'm coming in and I'm dry brushing it, but then I'm taking a paper towel and I'm really rubbing it in and helping it soak into the bucket itself. And then last, I just put the handles back on and I will be using it to display towels in my bathroom. Now I hope you are enjoying this video so far. I have so much fun creating these projects for all of you. Don't forget, again, the link for the printable is down below in my description box and that will take you over to my brand new website where you will be able to get that printable and download it for free. It doesn't cost anything. My website is the place where I'm now going to be having my printables because it's a safe place to be able to download them and be able to grab them and find them really easy. For this DIY, I'm going to be taking this large container from my thrift store and you can get these anywhere. So I went ahead and sanded it down and gave it a nice coat of white paint because we're going to take it from a Halloween decor 
to a farmhouse decor. Now I have a free printable for you all today. I went ahead and designed it myself. So if you want it, head on over to my website. The link is down below my description box so you can get to it and download it for free. And then all you're gonna do is just cut it out. I recommend shooting some hairspray on it because it seals and locks in that ink from your printer. While that paper is drying with the spray paint, go ahead and come back in with a small brush and some black paint. And I'm gonna just go around this to give this an enamel look. Now, the difference between the two paints of the acrylic and the spray paint are definitely different, so make sure you dry it really well, and then you're going to go over the whole thing with some Mod Podge. Now, I am going to also be taking my tag, my sign that I made earlier, that free printable, and I'm going to put that right on. This is going to have such a high-end look from a bucket that you either just had laying around your house or one from the Dollar Tree. And it is so beautiful to display blankets or towels, whatever you want inside of it somewhere in your home to store beautiful things. Now this little basket doesn't seem like a lot. And again, I got this 50% off. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it is such a beautiful shaped basket. And I thought this would be the cutest basket to put at my entry into my home to catch keys or sunglasses. So I'm going to take some painter's tape and I'm going to go up against the bottom of the basket on the inside of that basket and then on the outside I'm going to create a border because I wanted to update it with this beautiful green color so I just took a couple of coats of spray paint on it made sure that certain parts were still allowed to see the original basket and it really just transformed it you could do whatever color you want but I just wanted to show that a simple basket like this even has so much potential so don't ever skip these if you think you love the shape paint it you will be amazed how much it will transform the item and the finished look made me so happy and now it can catch my keys and my sunglasses when I walk in the door to keep my entryway organized in a beautiful way this container has so much potential it's just outdated and whoever it was that got rid of this i thought oh what a lost opportunity because these are so expensive so i took it outside and gave it a nice taupey spray paint color as our base to get it started and then i'm going to just come back in with some white paint and i'm going to dry brush on with white paint all over to bring out that texture and to lighten it up some. I really love dry brushing with different colors, not just brown. I love to bring in whites or a blue or a green, and it really does just transform the item that you're working with. So you can see here at this point that I'm going over all of these little boxes, and I went all over the initial big tall container that the boxes go into. Then once it was all dry, I went ahead and took some hardware, these cute little tags, screwed them onto the front and I thought how cute would it be if I numbered these so I'm adding in some cardstock that fits inside I'm gluing it down into place so it stays in there and then I'm just going to come in with some of these stickers they actually had these at the Target dollar spot so I picked some of these up they were in the wedding section for this season and but you can use any stickers from the Dollar Tree whatever you have on hand and then I just added on one and two and now I'm going to come back on the bottom with some stacking blocks to add some height to it and to add some wood element to it. And then I glued it and stapled it in place. Now cool enough, this staple gun that I have fit inside perfectly so I could get those back ones stapled in. Once it was all done, it's ready to be used somewhere in your home. A couple weeks ago I was in Michaels and I came across this beautiful vase. It's actually quite small in size 
for the price. I think it was way overpriced. I shared that over on my Instagram account. I'll link that down below because I share a lot of shop with me's on my Instagram stories. If you're interested in my account, head down there to my description box and you will see the link to my Instagram so you can come on by and say hi. But I went to my thrift store and found two cute jars. Now, let me tell you, one of the jars had a bug in it. It was the weirdest thing ever. So when I was opening up the larger one, I was a little creeped out hoping there wasn't a bug in that too. <laughs> Cause you just never know. I mean, for the most part, thrift store workers always clean things out and make sure, but it was the weirdest thing that there was a bug in the clear glass one. Anyway, I removed the tape and the stickers and then I took it outside and I used my smoky beige tan color. This is my favorite tan color to spray paint with. It has the most beautiful finish on it and the color is so neutral. It has a look between a very light brown with a hint of gray in it, which makes me so happy. Now I'm gonna take these napkins that I picked up on Amazon, I will link them down below, and I'm going to cut them down to size you can see that I removed one of the tissues, so I'm just getting to the one piece that has the pattern on it. I'm cutting it down to size, and with a nice coat of the Mod Podge, you're going to put that on, and then you're going to tap it. Do not drag your finger. As Sammy from Unicorn Dust Design says, if you drag your finger, it will rip it because it is so gentle. So just add on that Mod Podge and then you're going to pull down that paper and then you're going to tap it with your hand. Now I remember my mom doing this particular technique back in the day. She had these clay pots that she turned into bells that were hanging by our front porch that had like a floral pattern out of a napkin. And when I saw Sammy doing this, I just thought, I need to do that technique. It would be so cool to get this ginger jar look for my fall Thanksgiving look that I'm doing here for this video. And I just love how it's turning out. Now I'm gonna move on to the larger jar and it's gonna be the same process, a nice coat. Make sure you cut the paper down to the size that you want first, cause that will make it much easier to work with. And if you have a jar like mine where it's wider at the top, smaller at the bottom, tap it into place and when you have a wrinkle where you can see that it needs to overlap, just gently add a little bit extra glue and overlap and then tap it down into place, kind of creating a pleated effect on that tissue and you won't even notice it once it's all dry. Then I went in with one more coat over the top with the Mod Podge and when that was dry, I'm now going to add on some paint on top to distress it and to bring down some of that really dark blue. I wanted to lighten it even more to give it more of that French country look and I'm just wiping away any excess because what we're really trying to do is just to get that color to lightly be over the top so the pattern is still coming through. Then I'm gonna come in with my paintbrush and this is kind of a medium amount of paint I've got on my brush, not too heavy on the paint where I can wipe away a lot of the excess. We really wanna just create a aged look on this pot. And now I'm gonna come on the bottom with a brownish black color. I'm going to tap along the edge, and I'm also going to go onto the raw part of the clay that is on the bottom ring. That makes it look more aged over time. We're really going for a beautiful heirloom piece that you would see in somebody's high-end, beautiful looking home to get that look on a thrift store budget, which is always my favorite. Now we're gonna repeat that same process up on the lid of this particular jar, and then once it's all done, friends, I am so happy with this look, and I hope you will give it a try. I have started collecting rolling pins. I don't know why I love them so much. I think it's just because they remind me of my mom and baking with her when I was little, but I have started collecting them and I wanted to do something special with this one. So I'm taking some of my thicker painter's tape and I'm just cutting it down to size. Some of the thinner painter's tapes can be really expensive depending on what size you need because it's a customized shape, but really you can tape it to the table and just cut it down to the size that you need. 
Now I'm taking those thinner strips and I'm just going all over my rolling pin to create a really cute stripe on this. Now yes, this will not be able to be used to bake with anymore unless you were to go and seal the whole thing, but I'm not gonna be using that. This is gonna be strictly for decor because like I said, I love to collect these and I just think that they're so cute all gathered together in some type of a crock or a basket. So I went ahead and spray painted it all white and I'm coming back in and I'm just sanding off anywhere where there was bleed spots and then I'm gonna just go around the whole thing and rough it up and make it look so farmhouse chic. I think these are so cute being gathered all together and you can find these all over thrift stores and at garage sales all the time. People are always getting rid of these things and they just don't know what to do with them but I think they look so cute all gathered together as a collection. As I was walking around my thrift store, I came across this clock and I was so giddy. There was actually a woman shopping in front of me and I was praying and hoping that she did not pick it up she thankfully passed it up and I grabbed it the second I could get my hands on it because I knew that I could update it and give it life in our home. So I'm just going to preserve the metal gold ring around it. I liked that. I didn't want to get any spray paint on that. I'm just going to cover that up with a few strips of painter's tape and making sure that the seal is not touching onto the wood. I'm also going to cover up the very inside of the bottom framing of this clock because I want to make sure I'm preserving the area where the batteries are inserted into it as well as the back side because later on I found out I had no idea this clock actually chimes as well. I took it outside and gave it two lovely coats of spray paint with this taupey gray color. I love how it turned out. Now. I could leave it like this, but you all know that I love a little farmhouse here on my channel. So I'm just going to lightly sand the edges to really show all of the detail work on this clock. It's amazing how just spray painting it really brightened up this clock and I love how it's styled on my shelves now. I found this darling box at my local thrift store and I knew that I could give it an update. I loved the metal detail and also this little scallop bottom part. I thought that this would be so pretty updated with a beautiful blue color. I'm using this slate blue color by Rust-Oleum. I love this color. Sometimes when you buy spray paint it can be a little bit weird and you might not have the color turn out how you want it to, but this color worked perfectly for this box and what I was going for. So I made sure before I spray painted it, I took off all the screws, the hinges, and the little lock at the front. And then once it was spray painted twice, two coats of that spray paint, I went ahead and screwed all of that metal detail back on to make sure it completed that look. Once that was done, I got my brush so I could dry brush on a little bit of brown paint I go on heavy at first and then I come back in with my paper towel and then I dry off any spots where I have too much. I wanted it to have a distressed look without it taking away the color, lightly distressed. That really is my style here on my channel. I like things lightly distressed so you still get that farmhouse look, that country French look without it being too over the top. And then I'm also adding on a little bit of black detailing around some of the sides because I thought that that would be a nice accent to help it look a little more aged. Once it was all done, I was so excited with the look and to purchase a box like this can be so expensive and all I did was purchase one that was $1.50 from the thrift store. For this DIY, we're going to take this box, and you can honestly find these all over the place. They are always at thrift stores. You probably even have some in your house, 
and we're going to just zhuzh it up a little. I love that word and I'm always looking for an opportunity to say zhuzh. So I'm going to take my drill, drill four holes in the bottom corners, and then I'm going to pre-mark out where I want my handles to be and I'm going to go ahead and drill there too. And I will link all of the knobs and the handles down below in my description box so you can find them. These are all from Amazon. And then I'm going to simply come back in and start screwing everything on. Now you're going to notice that the handles are a little bit longer, but there's a way to fix that. This isn't going to have a lot of weight in it, so I'm going to simply just come in with some hot glue on the bottom side. And then on the other side, I added in some E6000 and some hot glue to make sure it's really locked in and in place. Then in the end, you're going to just add in whatever florals you want and it's ready to be displayed. They have all kinds of these metal trays at your thrift stores, at least they do at mine. And I picked this one up for 99 cents and I took it outside and first gave it a coat of white spray paint. Once I had that on, now I'm going to go and pull out all of my Dollar Tree stickers. You can see that I'm always picking from these and funny enough, the H's are always the one that's missing on every single one. I apparently use the H a lot, which makes sense because my name is Heidi, so who knows? Maybe it's because I'm just drawn to that letter. So what I'm going to do, I'm using my ruler and I'm just going to line up to make sure that my letters are nice and straight and I do stick them to my hand first to take a little bit of that adhesive stickiness away from it because you don't want it to peel up any of the first layer of that spray paint and I will recommend make sure it's dried really well before you start sticking down any stickers because that can also pick up the paint. But I love the idea of making a sign that is customized to something that you say to your kids all the time. Something that's uplifting and positive, something that lets them know that you love them and hanging that sign up in your home. So just in case you're not around to tell them when they need that message, they can see it hanging up somewhere in your home. So for me, I tell my kids all the time, you can do hard things. I want them to know that they need to push themselves and to not give up, to believe in themselves, that God always has a plan and we can always try our hardest. I want my kids to always know that I believe in them and I want them to believe in themselves. So at this point, I peeled away my stickers and now I'm just coming in with some brown and I'm going to create a couple of rust spots because I'm actually going to be hanging this up eventually in my boys room. I have a little mini makeover I'm doing for them soon. And now I'm just going to sand it and get it all roughed up because I want it to have that farmhouse industrial sign look to it. So I'm just taking my sandpaper and sanding on some spots here and there. And now I'm going to use my crocodile punch two holes up at the top. I love this tool. I'll link it down below and any of the other tools you see here in this video, but it goes through metal like butter. It's great for hands that have arthritis. And now I'm going to take one of these garden chains that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree around springtime. I always pick up a bunch when I see them and then I just hold on to them because I use them a lot on my crafts. I took apart the chain and I'm only going to be using one of the strands, but I'm also going to take one of the extra hooks and add that to the bottom of the chain so it has a nice way to hang it up. And look at this transformation from this outdated sign to this really cool farmhouse industrial sign. I've seen a lot of friends DIYing these boxes and when I was at the thrift store the other day I actually came across one I could not believe it. Now I got this half off on their half off day. I was so excited. So I went ahead and just took out all of the pre-existing outdated ivy, all this foam that was down in here, and then as well all of this Spanish moss. This stuff, I love using it in DIYs personally. Man, it makes the biggest mess. <laughs> and I am kind of a neat freak when it comes to my crafting space. I like my table to be clean. I don't like things all over it. So 
you saw me there wiping everything down now before I took it outside to spray paint it this London gray I ended up making sure that I dusted it all off as well because I wanted to make sure that it was really clean and it wasn't gonna have any issues with the paint bonding once I did one coat of spray paint all over it I'm gonna take a tan color and come back in not white because I think white is a little too stark for it. it'll take away from the beautiful grayish brown color it has and I'm just going to lightly dry brush all over with that grayish tint now I'm going to use my e6000 this is my little key that I had a subscriber send me and I will link it down below because I get people asking about it all the time now it works so great for the e6000 bottles I went ahead and just squeezed out some e6000 and some hot glue and I put my foam in against the sides of that box now remember you could definitely DIY this particular item it's so easy with large tongue depressor sticks and a couple of those crate boxes from the Dollar Tree. It's so easy to recreate this look. Now I'm coming in with some beautiful golden tones and ivory florals and leaves and just really filling it in nicely. I don't wanna to go too high up because it'll cover up all that lattice work. And then I'm going to come in with this candle that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the covering on it I just want to get to the candle and then I'm going to take a couple pieces of foam and I'm going to put them on the opposite sides of the spots because I want to make sure that the candle does not shift or slide around in there and it's nice and snug so I went ahead and put those foam pieces in there and now I'm going to come in with two peonies and I'm just going to pop those right into that foam on the front and the back and that is going to complete this look and it turned out even better than I thought. Friends, I say it all the time here, don't be afraid to go into a thrift store. A lot of friends are DIYing these from the Dollar Tree and I picked this up from my thrift store and saved myself so much time by just giving it a facelift. I found this darling little box shelf at my thrift store and it was half off so I got it for $2.50 and we are going to give it a makeover. I want to use this for essential oils in my linen closet. I thought this would be so cute to give a makeover to. So I used some of this beautiful, warm, happy feeling to it. I used a pretty peachy orange on the main part of it, the white on the top and bottom, and then I also use that same peachy orange color inside. And this blessed word, you can find these at the DT. I found mine from Hobby Lobby and there was a pack of a whole bunch of different words. I painted it a really dark gray color and then did a white dry brush look to it. And now I'm just taking some fabric, some gingham gray and white fabric and I'm just going to cut it down to size to put it inside and the last thing I did was I wanted to raise it up a little bit so it had some feet on it I drilled four holes in the bottom of my cabinet and now I'm gonna take these little wood feet these ball feet from Hobby Lobby I took two shish kebab sticks I'm gonna put some hot glue in and stick the stick in first cut them down to size, add some more wood glue and hot glue, and then I'm going to just put them right inside of those drill holes, and you've got yourself a darling brand new cabinet that cost hardly anything at all.
For this DIY, I found this tiny bucket. I thought this was so cute, and the coloring of the bucket was so farmhouse perfect that I did not want to do anything to the bucket, but I wanted to make it look more like a high-end summer. This could even go into fall because of how neutral the colors are. I thought this would be so pretty to have in my home for this next several months to put up and display. So I'm gonna just put some foam inside, a dowel stick, and then a round foam ball at the top. And you can see that I put in the moss around the bottom inside the basket. And now up at the top for that ball, I'm just going to take off all of these hydrangea flower petals off of the handle. And I poked a hole in the styrofoam ball and I'm just adding some hot glue in so they stay in nice and tight and in place. And then I'm going to just add some glue and put that ball right back onto the stick. You can see how this seriously took me maybe at tops about five minutes. I don't even think it was that. It was so fast. And now I'm going to take one of these little tag signs. I just can't help myself, friends. If you've been here a long time, you know I love these signs, these little tags. And I'm just going to glue that right onto the front of the basket because it just gives it a little something farmhouse even more to the front. And then I'm going to take some twine because why not? I love twine too. I tied a double loop bow and I'm going to glue that right onto the stick to complete the look and it's ready to be displayed. I find so many of these decor pieces at my local thrift stores and I decided to pick this one up because I felt like I could give it an updated look. Now I definitely did not pay that price for it. On this particular day for this whole video, I got all of my things 50% off. So just know that I always end up getting things on sale days. I love thrifting on days when there's sales for home decor. So I took it outside and I spray painted it first a shiny gloss gray, a very light gray. And now I'm gonna come in with my paintbrush and white paint, and I'm going to go into all of the cracks and crevices of this particular item. Now you can see here that it looks like a mess. What is happening? What am I doing? But as I start to wipe away with a dry cloth, it really starts to settle in those cracks, and it turns into a high-end looking cement decor piece. Now, there are a lot of stores online that sell these for outrageous prices, $60 to $100. I know in particular Pottery Barn has a couple of things that look just like this for tables, for coffee tables in particular, where you put them layered and stacked on top of some books, and they charge so much for them, and I am basically doing this for $2.50. Well, I mean, if you consider it in the paint as well, maybe $3, but I had so much fun transforming this and it really just had a concrete look when it was done. Looks so beautiful stacked with books. I definitely recommend picking these up and giving them a try. Now, I know I'm not the only one that sees a lot of these kind of signs at their thrift store. I got this one half off, and I am going to turn it into something really cool and functional for organizing things in your craft room, in your kitchen, wherever you want to put it. I just took it outside after I took off the metal hardware on the back, spray painted it a tan color, and then I'm going to take some of these baskets from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to create some hole marks where I know I want to drill out for both of these baskets. And I'm going to have four for each basket that way. So once I'm all done drilling my holes, I can come back in with some zip ties and really easily fasten it to this board. I love doing organization DIYs like this because it seriously costs me hardly anything. And if you tried to buy something like this from the store, it, they really are so expensive. It doesn't have to cost a lot to have a functional, beautiful home. It just takes a couple of bucks and some imagination and being willing to do these projects. So once I've got it all zip tied on, I came back in with some of these metal tags that I found on Amazon. I'll link them down below. I just think these are so cool. 
and I'm just going to zip tie that right on and then to finish off the look and to give it a little bit of that farmhouse feel I'm going to dry brush on some white paint and hang it up with my metal on the back to display things or organize things in my home. When I go to my thrift stores, I run into a lot of these wood box signs as well as these little wooden boxes. I find tons of them all the time and I think, I wonder if people knew that you could transform this into something really cool by just adding a couple of supplies to it. Now here on YouTube, you see a lot of people making tiered trays and sometimes when you use the Dollar Tree supplies, they can get a little bit pricey. And I just wanted to give you another option to show you that you can use these type of things, think out of the box, and turn them into the coolest tray ever. So I'm gonna just remove all of the stuff that was all over them, the hooks to hang it up on the back of the white frame, the ribbon and the bells on the box. I'm gonna patch those holes. And now I'm gonna take this leftover stair spindle that I cut down from a previous project a couple days ago in another video. I will link that video at the end of this video and down below, but I'm gonna just cut it down. I'm gonna use four small balls and one larger ball, one long craft stick that's a little bit thick, not too thick, and four shish kebab sticks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my drill and right at the corners where they meet up on the sides of my boxed artwork, I'm going to drill four holes in those corners and then I'm also going to drill a hole right in the center of that artwork. Now I'm going to take those shish kebab sticks and those four balls and I'm going to put hot glue down inside of them, add a stick to them and make sure that the glue is not popping out over because we want to be able to lay this as flat as we can onto that art canvas. Then I'm going to cut them down and the reason why we're doing this with these shish kebab sticks is it's going to allow the ball to really bond up into the actual artwork instead of just having it glued the ball to the bottom of the box or the artwork and then it's gonna pop off over time. This is really gonna allow it to have something to hold on to and it'll be really sturdy and built well. Then I drilled a couple of holes to allow the wood not to crack and now I'm just gonna come in with my screw. <laughs> you can tell right here I was trying to get it to stand just right so I could drill it in. So I was struggling there just a little bit, but I eventually got it to go. I added in some glue where I needed it and then drilled that together. Then up at the top, I'm drilling a bigger hole. And sometimes I don't have the exact size drill bit size that I need. So sometimes I just kind of slowly go around a little bit in a circular motion and it gets a bigger hole that I need. So that way I can be able to fit this dowel down in there. I'm sure some people are going to tell me that's probably not the best move, but it is what I do in my craft room. If I'm being real, I am a little rogue and a little wild when it comes to my crafting. I guess it's just because I use my drill a lot and I feel really comfortable with it. So please don't do anything you don't feel comfortable with. So you can see here that I cut down that wood stick down to size. I'm going to put that piece in there. Then I'm going to add on some more wood glue and hot glue for a long-term, short-term hold. Once I've got all of my glue on, I then can take my little wooden box that I also drilled a hole in, and I'm gonna just simply slide that right on and it's gonna lock into place and have a really nice, good hold on it. Now, because you can see that popping up, I'm now gonna take the other part and bring that right on and this makes it look like the wood is going all the way through and it just gives a beautiful finish. Now up at the top, we need something to be pretty to finish the top of that bar that's holding it all together or the pole. So I'm gonna take that larger ball and I pick up these wooden balls from Hobby Lobby, but you can basically get them from any craft store. And then I'm going to just glue that right down in there into place and it really finishes the top nicely. Then to finish it off, I took it outside and spray painted it this beautiful green color and boy did it transform these items.
This transformation is so fast, don't blink because you're going to miss it. So we're going to start with this really pretty metal lantern that was just forgotten. And I think it is so beautiful, this pattern and texture on the front of it. So I took it outside and gave it a really pretty green color spray with my spray paint. And now I'm just coming back in with some white paint and I'm bringing back in some of that texture to make it pop and really stand out. So first I started by just dusting off the frame to make sure everything was ready to be painted. And then I'm gonna come in with some white paint and just simply do a couple of layers on it to make sure that it has a very nice coat. Now I'm going very cautiously and carefully around the fabric part of the frame. I loved that neutral tan color and I wanted to make sure I kept that intact. So I'm just taking my time with my angle brush going around it. Now I love projects like this because you can take old artwork and give it a brand new look by just painting the frame. Now I'm going to make sure that it's dry before I do my second coat to make sure it's really dried and really saturated with the white. And now I'm going to come in to give it that farmhouse look. I'm going to take my sandpaper and very lightly sand certain edges of the frame as if it looks like it had been worn for some time. After that, it's ready to be displayed. Look at the before and after by just painting the frame white. It really did transform this artwork. For this DIY, I'm going to be thrift flipping this item that I picked up for just 50 cents from my thrift store. I always take off my stickers with my heat gun and anytime there's sticky residue left over, I will take the existing sticker, fold it in half so it's in a nice little ball. And if you tap it, majority of the time it will take up the remainder of that adhesive that got left behind. So I just keep tapping it until I pull most of it up if there's any extra left over, then I'll use some Goo Gone to get the rest off. Then I took it outside and I spray painted it this beautiful blue color. I will link the blue down below in my description box so you can check it out. And I'm now just going to come in with a dark grayish brown and I'm going to make some distress spots on this some at the bottom, some at the neck and the handle, and I got it to the way that I wanted it to look. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the next part. I wanted to make a darling little bow on the front of it, and as well as a wreath, because I wanted to make it look more high-end, something that you would see at Pottery Barn or Ballard Design. I just really love this ticking stripe ribbon that you can get from the Dollar Tree. So first I went around the neck and did a double knot and then I'm going to create my bow and glue that on. I always like to do them separate so the tail looks beautiful and the bow loops look beautiful. And this one I did a double bow loop. I will link my bow video down below. I actually have a video I did a long time ago where I talk about all my bows and how I do them. And now we're going to move on to the wreath that's going to go at the base of the candle. I love taking these type of thrift finds, these candle holders or stands, and you can do some really cool things to customize them. So I'm cutting off all of these wheat stems from Floral Pick, and then I popped off some greenery from another one, and you can see here that I'm just slipping the greenery onto these wheat sticks, and that way I can customize it and make it look the way I want it to. Now I'm gonna start by taking two of them, I'm going to scooch the second one down a little bit more towards the middle of where the wire is and then I'm going to wrap it around and I'm going to continue to do that where you can see I'm kind of curving the edge wrapping around the other one that's the top towards the circle where I'm making this wreath ring and I'm just keep twisting it and extending it twisting and extending it anytime I have the wire that's sticking out too much I'll just clamp it down with my wire cutters and I will just clamp everything into place 
And then at the very end, once I've got it to the length that I want it to be, I'll go ahead and end off the circle by making sure I have the right size for the candle to slip into it and twisting that wire. And then just making sure that you don't see the wire, I'm taking the greenery and just kind of weaving it around it to make a nice complete circle. And in the end, I'm just gonna add on a candle and it looks so high end and beautiful. This wire basket was found at my local thrift store and I loved the shape of it so much. I can see why somebody donated it because the fabric liner inside was gone. So I decided to show you all today how to make a fabric liner for these wire baskets just in case you find one at your thrift store and you can make one for yourself. Now I did take my basket outside and spray painted it white to go along with the theme of this video to show you to don't be afraid to spray the baskets if you want to any color and now I'm going to take some drop cloth fabric and I'm going to start at the side where the seam is and I'm going to just start layering it into the basket going along the side and making sure the end of that fabric is touching down at the bottom of the basket and draping over the side now you can see here when I get to the end I don't want all this extra fabric so I'm going to go ahead and just cut Make sure everything is all tucked down in there so you know that your alignment is correct. And I'm just going to take my scissors, snip it, and pull off that extra that we don't want. Once I did that, I now want to make sure that it stays in place. But first, I'm going to cut off that extra that's hanging over really far in the basket. So I want to make sure there's still some overhang on it. And I'm doing about two inches hanging over the side anything extra I'm just cutting it off and now you have the perfect size for the side of the basket so now I'm going to take my fabric and you can see here that it naturally wants to pleat on the rounded part of the basket and so what I did was is I just helped it kind of pleat a little bit clearer where the lines need to be and each side has four pleats and I'm going to use these clips these clips are going to be really great. They're going to hold the pleats in place so we can glue them a little bit later. But I want to make sure that we don't lose that oval shape. So now I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm going to glue the ends together. Then I'm going to snip up where I know that there's too much extra fabric in the middle. And then I'm going to pop it right off. Now because the pleats are already hooked into place with those clips, we can pop it out without anything falling apart on us. We're gonna find where those pleats are and on the outside where the pleat clip is not, we're going to add some hot glue, just a dollop right inside of there and then close that little clamp. That's gonna hold it in place and that's gonna secure the pleat and you're gonna do it on all four of them. Once you've got all four of those done, you're gonna to wanna to do it as well on the other side. Once you have the pleats completed on both of the sides, you can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is removing those clips. We don't need them anymore because the pleats are being held in place. And we're going to work up further on the pleat by making a little bit of a longer line with the hot glue and then just pinching a little bit further up. You can see here at this point that the pleats are really starting to be defined and it's looking real nice. Now where that seam is, we're going to go ahead and just find it, flip it the right way. And you can see right here at this point, it's already taking the shape of the basket. Now remember where we cut earlier? That was kind of the guideline to know where if there was too much extra fabric. We're going to go ahead and cut it off and cut a little bit as an arch. We want to make sure it's not a straight line because that can cut into the sides of the basket having the fabric come down all the way to the bottom. Now at the top where the pleats are nice and pretty on the outside and you can see that thick seam line, we're going to go ahead and fold over about a half an inch and glue that fabric down. Go ahead and set it aside, take another scrap of fabric, put it underneath the basket and trace about a half an inch wider than the basket itself. Then we're going to take that fabric 
that oval we just made, we're going to open up the fabric that we just pleated and made for the sides of the basket and we're going to bring it all together. Now you can see that I laid the fabric down and I'm coming up with the sides. I'm bringing the sides up. Right here you can see that I'm bringing it up and clipping it together and we want to make sure that the messy part of the seams is on the inside of the basket. So that nice pretty seam and those nice pretty pleats is leaning against the bottom of my desk. It's you can't see it. We're looking at the inside of the basket right now. Go ahead and start gluing that along that seam line and just keep pinching and working around that oval. Once you've got everything all glued into place and you come to the very end, remove your last clip, glue in your last little bit of your hot glue. And if there's any extra fabric that seems a little too long, it's okay. You can just pleat it and it hides right in there beautifully. You won't have a problem. No one's going to notice it. This is just a really beautiful way to be able to create a lined wire basket. Now here you can see I've got my bottom. This is the outside of this liner. And I'm going to go ahead and just pop that right back into my basket. Push everything down in there. At this point, look how fun. We've lined this basket, gave it a new life, and then I want to make sure that these pleats are not flapping all over the place so I'm just going to add a line of glue and then just push down those pleats to lock them into place so the sides are really beautiful on the inside of the basket as well. Do it on both sides to make sure it's all nice and secure and then up at the top to make sure that it doesn't just slip off the sides I'm going to pinch down a little bit of fabric with a little bit of a pleat right where the handle is to kind of tighten the fabric around the basket. Glue it into place and then repeat it on the other side. And then the last thing I wanted to do, this is not necessary, but I thought it would be really pretty to add a bow because I love bows. I can't help myself. I'm going to just add on two ticking stripe bows and I'm so happy with how this turned out considering that it was just a basket that got donated because somebody didn't find use in it anymore. I came across this beautiful metal urn at my thrift store and I knew that I could give it a fresh new look. Now I happen to be using a really pretty green color in my home and funny enough it has this green that I'm actually wanting to get the look of more on this particular item. I took it outside and I spray painted it two coats making sure that there were no drips and it was a nice even coat all over it. Now I'm going to just simply put a piece of foam inside and it gives this beautiful metal decor piece a brand new look and it is so pretty with these fall picks from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to put a few of them in there and style it on my piano. I love the transformation and it just looks so high end. I hope you felt inspired by these DIYs today. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think, which one you liked, which one you think you will try. And until the next episode, bye friends.